Good afternoon. My name is Lloyd F. Reese, and today we're here at the beautiful Westfield Pavilion where we're going to experience a wonderful event with a wonderful human being and a wonderful artist by the name of Mr. Ernie Barnes. Now, Mr. Barnes is here to promote his book signing of his, of his autobiography, release an autobiography of yourself entitled From Past to Palette. Can you explain to our viewers how, that, how this project all come about? Well, it's, uh, as a book, it's the story of uh, how my creativity survived uh, professional football. I've been asked many times how did uh, a professional football player become an artist, so the book From Past to Palette really explains that. That's what it's about. Now, Mr. Barnes, you were uh, raised in Durham, North Carolina. Now, exactly who were your role models during that period, and what influenced you to want to be an artist? Uh, during that time, there were no role models. I mean, few we can, you can boast uh, that we have some creative people active today, but uh, during that time, there were very, very few. I think uh, the ones that you have active today were spawned by certain images that I produced over my career because as I look around I can see many of those images in, uh, reflected in uh, the work of these other painters. But uh, I wanted to be an artist because that's what I wanted to be. That was in me to do it and I went to school, I majored in art and I developed my skills and uh, I'm doing it. Now, Mr. Barnes, how much of how much of was a dis does, was a disappointment for you to not be able to attend Duke or North Carolina? Well, during the time, uh, you accepted the fact that you couldn't go to University of North Carolina or Duke University. I mean, it was uh, it was a period of uh, racism where it was very high. The civil rights movement had not started. So uh, North Carolina Central University, which was North Carolina College, was there for me, and we were very proud to have it in the community. So I went there. Now, neo-mannerism. Uh, I'm familiar with the fact that it's, it's the, uh, the post-Harlem Renaissance. How did, how did that name come about, neo-mannerism? Well, mannerism goes back to the 15th, 16th century. I mean, this is nothing new is just that my style reflects that period. Uh, the style utilizes elongation, distortion, and a compact canvas. So uh, mannerism is the correct academic category for my work, whereas black art would not be. Now, Mr. Barnes, with, uh, you were born in the last few years of the Depression going into the, the war years, how did you keep your dreams and your aspirations alive during those periods, sir? Well, it was the teachers and my parents who kept my dreams alive because if you were black during that period and you had some skills, those skills were nourished and uh, they were nursed by the teachers. So it was a, a, a very creative, a, ver, a very, uh, it was a community whereby everybody who was very really present in that community, wanted to see some success from anyone, don't care what type of success it was, but hopefully something positive. And uh, they responded. They, they really, those teachers really worked to develop us. Now, Mr. Borens, what, what year did you first arrive in Los Angeles? I came to Los Angeles in 1960 to play with the then Los Angeles Chargers. Now, what I want to know is, how did you separate football from art? I didn't. I never separated the two. Uh, other people separated them, but to me, the football field was just an extension of the art class. Now, I'm quite sure football took up a lot of your time. Now, how were you able to divide that time between football and your artwork? Well, it was just, uh, I, football was in my consciousness. Uh, when it was there, art wasn't. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't walk around with a sketch pad all the time. Uh, when you're a professional athlete, that's what you are. and. Uh, I didn't have time for certain other things until uh, there was time to develop. Now, Mr. Barnes, how important is it for our youth to follow their dreams? You can't, well, it's extremely important. Else, what else would they do? Would be lumps, which we don't need. We need to uh, recognize that it is important and for all of us to play a role in the importance of, of, I mean, of trying to realize some young person's dream. Uh, you 
kind of take it for granted, at least I do, that young people have dreams and it is important to them. So when you have an opportunity to nourish that dream, you take advantage of it, just like what happened for me during, over the course of my career. Mr. Barnes, if you had to do it all over again, would you do it any differently, sir? Don't think so. <laughs> Once again, happy Black History Month, Mr. Barnes. It's a pleasure talking to you, sir. Thank you very much.